Welcome to Precount Power-Ups with the Nitpicking Nerds. This time, Aura of Courage is getting upgraded for $50. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds, bringing you more daily content. If you want to support said daily content, go to patreon.com and click us a little, just click there. And if you want to support us and yourself by buying cards, go to the TCG player link in the description, click where you want, buy the cards, and then boom, when you check out, we get a kickback on the order. Do you guys ever wonder how BZ does that so perfectly every time with no, no fumbling over his words? There was no fumbling. I was a little early on the point. <laughs> True. It was a little early. But we're going to hop right into this video. We're doing a pre count power up. What is that, BZ? What, what is a pre-con power? -up? Well, you know, you got your decks that range, the pre-con decks range from, you know, 30 to 45 bucks when they come out. And we're going to add $50 to it and literally just turn it into a powerhouse deck that does what it wants to do every single game, can compete with these mid-tier power level decks, and it's just going to make you super happy. They're, I think one of the best words to describe these decks is that they are focused. Streamlined. Ooh, how about that? Streamlined, focused, both great words for describing, but... Before we hop into anything or talk about what we're doing with this deck or its game plan, we need to know who the commander is. Who's leading this deck, BZ? The commander is Galia, Kindler of Hope. She's one green, white, blue for a 4-4 legendary elf knight with vigilance. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast aura and equipment spells from the top of your library. When you cast an equipment spell this way, it gains when this equipment enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. So the deck's game plan is to combine equipment and auras to suit up resilient creatures and swing in for, well, big damage. Yes, we're going to win by assembling a one-shot kill on each of our opponents, maybe one at a time, while protecting whatever creature we have that's attacking. One thing I want to say about this deck before we get into the actual changes we made, you probably, when building this with no budget or a higher budget, want to pick auras or equipment. But we figured this commander, kind of the specialty is both. So let's see if we can make a deck that has auras and equipment subthemes. First and foremost, one of them picking their signature moves, getting those stinky cards out that do not fit our game plan. They just... They don't work. They're not what we're trying to do whatsoever. P.U. Cadbury of Mithril Hall. You don't do... This card doesn't do anything, let alone what we want it to do. This precon, I will say, was like the most polarizing. It had some of the best reprints and just some of the worst, like original brand new cards. They're terrible. So Cadbury, just like, I'm never going to see it. We may not ever say its name on this channel ever again. Yeah, Cadbury is not going to... If we're doing deck text and we're talking about cards, Cadbury is not going to come up unless... Somebody makes us. Yeah, no one's going to say Cadbury from this moment on right now. Yes. Storvold, it's a different legend, it's a different deck, and it's not very good anyway. Yeah, that one's better than Cadbury. At least there's some stuff you can do, but we just not interested, which is fine. Clay Golem, I think this is overall pretty bad. Just get it out. It does not wear equipment particularly well, and it doesn't care about equipment or auras, so what do we want it for? Yeah, Fate Seed's a whole different deck, just absolutely not fitting into what this deck's trying to do. Yeah, Ride the Avalanche is a plus one, plus one counters card. And I don't know if it's that great, but that's for the, us to figure out in some plus one, plus one counters deck tech, not now. Yeah. Realm Cloak Giant. Sorry, what? Realm Cloak Giant is not at all what we're looking to do. We're not Giant Tribal, and we're not uh, we're not in for over-costed board wipes. I just realized why this is in there. I couldn't figure it out the whole time I was doing it, and I just realized because Storvald is a giant. There you go. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, an Angel of Finality. You know, it's not the worst card in the world, but it's definitely not a synergy card, and we just cut it. So now that we cut all those stinkers that don't fit what our game plan is at all, we have to put in cards that do fit our game plan instead. Yes, so one thing that you might notice we might want is things that care about drawing cards with equipment and auras, which are also enchantments. There's really not a lot for aura uh, for equipment. We have Pure Steel Paladin and, and SRAM already in the deck, so we can't really add much else, but we can add Sithis, Stetson Champion, and Eidolon of Blossoms. There's 20 enchantments in this deck? Yeah, 20 enchantments. So this is one of the reasons you want to lean one way or the other. Splitting leaves you in this weird situation where you draw for some of the stuff you want to do and not for the other half. Yeah. If you, where if you lead into auras, you get to put in more of these Sithis, Sithis and Champion, and Eidolon of Blossom type effects. Yes, and Galia is going to let us cast things from the top of our deck. So one thing these guys do is when you know the top card of your library and it's not an aura or an equipment, well, you can then play an enchantment, draw, clear the top card, and then check again to see if you can get an equipment for like a free equip. Yes, and the next one is a little bit of top deck manipulation. Course your crew fix lets you, lets you play lands at the top of your library. It gains you life and, and it's an enchantment. So for your things, your Sithis, your Sithesan Champions, your, your Idolab Blossoms, it'll draw you a card as well. I like this a lot. Uh, I think in the non-budget version, you probably want to fiddle around with Oracle of Moldiah, maybe instead or in addition to. 
because the whole thing is you want to play Galia and then you like cast as many things from the top as you can. But when there's a land, you can't do anything. But the Corsair's like, no, no, no. Let me clear that for you. Yeah, let me get that. Let me get that out of the way for you. Brainstone actually lets you manipulate the top of your deck. You, it, it literally does brainstorm. Yes. Except for it's a brainstone. It's a brainstone. So you can put equipment aura on top, and then boom, cast, cast, get your free equips, and just start beating people up, and definitely saves you mana. Invisible Stalker, really good at being suited up. First thing, it's hexproof. Second thing, it's unblockable. This thing is annoying. It's just easy mode. You're not even playing magic half the time with this. And that's fine for us because we actually are just suiting it up and killing people with it. It's not interactable. As soon as you get its toughness up there and you make it indestructible, this thing's not going anywhere. Yeah, it's really it's really annoying to get rid of, and that's why it's one of those great threats. Next is Slippery Bog Bonder. It carries equipment well because it has hexproof itself. But on top of that, it gives something else hexproof. This can protect your commander, or it can just save a different threat from some sort of spot removal. Yeah, when you save a threat from spot removal, and now it has hexproof forever, that's a pretty sweet deal. And then as a fallback, you can start putting your equipment and auras on this thing. Yeah, and Brown Tide Lion is a weird card. It is, it's a creature in itself, and then it becomes an aura? What a weird magic card. It's weird, but it actually is a nice budget way to help protect our things. It can gain indestructible. You gotta hold up two mana, but once you're once you've suited up, you can be ready to do that because you're just going to kill people and say, answer this or you die. I can hold up two mana for three turns while you die. And then when it dies, it comes back and protects something else. Yeah. Uh, and Arden, Intrepid Archaeologist, just lets you move equipments, auras all around. This guy actually cares about both, and it's nice to put a, have him in the deck because we there's not much that cares about both, but he is one of the, the few. And it just cheats equip costs too. All day. Another thing that hits really hard is Heavenly Blade Master. You can move all of your auras and equipments to it. It's a 3-6 flying double strike. Oh my goodness, that thing's huge. And on top of that, it anthems your team for each thing attached to it. My goodness. Yeah, there actually are a few reasons to go auras and equipment, and this might be one of them, where it, your creatures get plus 5, plus 5. Some equipment gain haste. There's a swift foot boots already in this deck. This thing now has haste, double strike, hexproof, flying, plus who knows what from all the equipments and enchantments that are now on it. Yeah, it just gets super big, and with Double Strike flying, it's a very evasive threat that's hard to block. Now that we cut the trash and added some of the coolest, best synergy pieces, we get to look at cards that did fit the game plan or were equipments and auras that we wanted, but we ended up cutting them in favor of much better cards. First category here, we're improving our equipment slots. Sort of ours, not interested. V Viridian, Longbow, it's just, these cards just aren't good enough equipments. When you, this is one, these are things when you start doing the math, it's like, oh my goodness. Even if I'm cheating, this is not good. Right, like a moon silver spear. You pay four, and then you get a free equip, and then you like make a four four, but it doesn't give any stat boost really. It's just like I am not interested in that at all. There's the equipments fall off really quick. It's kind of like dragons from the last precon. You need there's a upper tier of amazing ones. You got your sword ofs and your your skull clamps and your other things like that. And then there's the middle tier of like, oh, it grants power, toughness, and evasion. And then there's these that just don't grant anything. Yeah, nothing worth getting. Uh, giant, Belt of Giant Strength is trash. Don't play that in Commander. Winged Boots, I don't think that's very good either. I mean, it all all it's essentially giving is flying and a little bit of ward. Yeah, it's not quite hexproof. We have access to hexproof. And we have Greaves if you really want to add it to the stack. Masterwork of Ingenuity, if you want to go equipments, 100% that stays in your deck. But we can't, we're kind of playing both sides right now. So we can't have an equipment clone. Yes, but one of the best equipments for any equipment deck, Black Bay Road of Forge. This is Commander. You have a legend. And guess what? Since you have legends, well, why don't we equip it for only two? Uh, this hits like a truck. Yeah, or you play it off the top of your library and equip it for free on a non-legend anyway. Yeah, this card is absolutely perfect for any, equi any equipment deck. This is probably one of the first cards I would suggest for almost all of them. Very good for EDH equipment decks. Fire Shrieker, the way to grant double strike. It's this is a this is one of those cards that's a, a budget friendly way to do it. Yeah, there's two or three ways to get double strike in this deck. It hits tw it makes your creature hit twice as hard. It makes you require half as much commander damage if you want to kill somebody with Galia. I think it's going to be worthwhile in the deck, especially on an unblockable threat. And Nettle Cyst, talk about one of the only overlaps of artifacts and enchantments. The quick creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact and enchantment you control. Yep. And it gives you a free germ. So you get a free creature to put on, like BZ said, and you can just move this wherever you want. It, is, it has a pretty cheap equip cost to move back and forth. Yeah, let's check out some auras that didn't make the cut. Griff's Boon, that was the last aura I cut. Still, just, I get that it comes back. I get that it's cheap. It's better if you're going to cantrip every time, I guess. 
It's not good for like raw stats, which is kind of what we're looking for. Curse of Orbosity and Psychic Impetus. I think those cards are just pretty poopy, even though they are auras. Eel Umbra, Angelic Gift, and Abundant Growth. Angelic Gift and Abundant Growth can trip. They just don't go on creatures, really. I, like, I mean, Angelic Gift obviously does. It just doesn't grant enough stuff. We don't have enough spot in the deck for that. Yeah, it's not. It's just not good enough. In any a, a, a risk that is associated with auras, as always, is the creature can be removed in response. And when the reward is so low, you can't be playing that card because you're, the blowout is like, well, I got two for one on my Angelic Gift. Yikes. Yeah, I mean, I'm less worried about two for ones and more worried about just it's a two mana cantrip. Not we don't have all the enchantresses in this deck to even take care advantage of it. We don't have the budget to get all of the replenishes to bring them all back. And it just isn't going to do as much as it will in a more powerful deck. So just don't play it. The first one we added that actually works with auras and equipment is Rune of Sustenance. The runes can be put onto either equipment or creature. And if it's put onto an equipment, it gives the ability that it would give to the creature. In this case, it's Lifelink, which is just super awesome. Plus, these cycle. They cycle. And if you're really in a spot or a pinch where, let's say, you know they have uh, targeted removal and you want a cantrip, you can enchant one of your lands. Yeah, absolutely. Rune of Sustenance is always a cantrip. It's never died, regardless of the board state. And the fact that you could put it on an equipment to make the, an equipment that much better while cycling is just... That's so, so good. Unquestioned Authority, this is a, a cycling aura that I'm willing to play. It's two and a white, and then you enchant the creature. It has protection from creatures, which means unblockable. And if you want to hold it back on defense for some reason, it won't die in combat to a creature. And you draw a card. It replaces itself. This card's sweet. Up next is Aqueous Form. This gives, makes a little creature unblockable, and when you hit, you get a little bonus scry. I think this scry is actually a little bit even better in this deck because it lets you scry into an artifact, or an equipment, or aura. Yeah, so it, ha it does have an extra, like, oomph. There is a little bit of oomph. You're going to play it, and it's going to say, deal 10 damage to an opponent, scry one. And then if it survives, you get to do more stuff. Yeah, you get to keep doing dealing 10 over and over again, actually. Yeah, and if you can't trip off it, you just feel like you're cheating. Yeah, All That Glitters is one of those that just pumps, it pumps for each artifact and enchantment you control. So it can just get real big and real silly real fast. <laughs> there's, I can't believe there's so many actual overlaps. It's, it, yeah, it's it's like, it's only like seven. That's the sad part. They can, they, it seems like they, they've been trending more toward this though. Yeah. So we'll probably see more in the future as well. Like if we got two more SRAMs, I think this is totally doable. Yeah. Uh, another RAM spell for a deck, Wolf. Willow Haven, it enchants a land and it makes a tap for an extra green. But it can also produce a threat later in the game when you have literally nothing else to do. Yeah, if you're that desperate for a creature, you'll be glad you can have one for a thousand mana, even if it is a stupid 2 2 wolf token. <laughs> Something that's cute, I threw in an Arbor Elf to this deck because the deck had uh, Wild Growth and Utopia Sprawl in it. Mm -hmm. And so I added Wolf Willow Haven. And with Arbor Elf, you get to do this cute little enchant a forest and then untap it for extra mana. <laughs> Plus, burr, 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 one mana dorks are also just good. And lastly, for this category, we have Kestia, the Cultivator, who is a bestow creature who you can put on it. It, it can make an aura onto a creature, and whenever an enchantment or an enchanted creature attacks, you draw a card. Yeah, so you're going to get your card back right away if you bestow it. The creature that attacks, boom, it draws you a card. And if there's a board wipe or something awful happens, well, Kestia comes back. She's just in play. You untap with her, and you can start equipping everything else and smashing somebody and draw another card. The last category is like ways to get into your deck or dig for auras and equipment and serum visions riverwise auger and nether reese puzzle ward are not how you do it i get that they scry and they draw your cards and the riverwise brainstorms but it's so expensive how about instead of that we just forget it and we just tutor and reanimate and actually get our threats yes so open the armory just lets us straight up go into our deck and well open the armory and get an equipment yeah, let's, we need Hexproof. Let's not try to scry two after drawing a card. Let's just go get Hexproof. We'll just go get the equipment or aura we need for that. Yeah. Stone Hero Giant just throws equipments into play at instant speed and just attaches them. Yeah, so you just, Stone Hero Giant's just a tutor on a body, which is awesome. You're going to, you're going to, we want to have bodies to throw this stuff on, and we also want ways to get our equipments. Best of both worlds. Yeah, there's, there is one card that we always hate in this deck called Argentum Armor, where when a creature attacks, you destroy a permanent. Stone Hero Giant's going to throw it in play, and you're going to attack for, like, 10. And you actually will get to destroy something if you do it before combat. So that's, you know, our Gentleman Armor will never be talked about in a better light than it is now. Uh, Sovereign of Lost Alara. This means whenever you attack with one creature, so it's an, ex an exalted trigger, 
you go and you get any aura and just sh just throw it on that creature. Right. Oops, my creature's unblockable now. Oops, my creature has hexproof. Oh, it's got protection from creatures. It's got a giant boost from something like all that glitters. You just really can mess people up with sovereigns. And Sun Titan gets back the equipment and auras that may or may not have been destroyed. Boom, onto the battlefield. I guess not the ones that may not. You can also, uh, something with Sun Titan, if your creature by some chance has Shroud. Not something this deck does. But if your creature has Shroud, sometimes you can bring it back and put your Shrouded creature who have those equipments. Yeah, we don't have the budget for Greaves, but it, if you put a Greaves in this deck and you just have one lying around, Sun Titan gets around Shroud. The fact that when auras enter from your hand or your library and they just go straight to the battlefield, they don't target. They just enter attached to something. Yeah, when they're not cast. Nice little trick that you can easily use to get around Shroud. And I guess it works for hexproof creatures that you don't control too. Yes. And Armored Sky Hunter just digs. It digs, digs, digs to find what you're looking for. And it gives you that free equipment too. This is another one that overlaps. Yeah. Okay, we can talk about real quick the ways this deck can actually win. We're going to rely mostly on combat, but we still do have one way to win where combat is almost not really required, or at least not relevant. It's going to, the way we win is going to get right around that. The first two, Fire Shrieker and Holy Avenger. We want to give Double Strike so that our commander or some other creature that's unblockable can just smack twice as hard and literally cuts the work we have to do in half. Yeah, and if we combine those double strikers with something like Colossus Hammer or Black Blade Reforged, all of a sudden we're just hitting for tons and tons of damage. But that's not going to be good enough. We have to add in a way to sneak them through so they can't just be chump blocked every turn. Aqueous Form and Question Authority, they're going to make sure that they can't just throw a stupid 1-1 one -one Goblin in front of you. Yeah, Robo Stars is going to help protect your creature and just can phase it out over and over so that... Nothing can really touch it, but you're still going to have to get through at some point. So just kind of think of Fire Shrieker plus Colossus Hammer plus Aqueous Form is you win the game. You just kill a player at the very least, right? You're just going to kill somebody. Yeah. It's too much damage. Exactly. You're just going to beat through and knock a player out of the game. And going infinite, there's only one way to really do it in this deck, and that's with Siona. Classic classic combo. Everyone knows it with Siona. It's Shielded by Faith. What Siona says whenever something becomes enchanted, with an enchantment, you make a 1-1. Wow. Guess what? Shield of by Faith moves to that 1-1. And then a new 1-1 comes out. Right. And Shield of Faith moves to that 1-1. And then a new 1-1. And then you just you make infinite guys and you'll win the game. Yeah, so Siona can dig you seven cards for an aura. And then when you play Shielded by Faith after, uh, you can make infinite 1-1s, stop the chain whenever you want. And now it's like, okay, deal with my infinite 1-1s. This wasn't even hard to assemble. It was literally just two cards. And they're both totally functional on their own right. You might whiff in this deck more than others with Siona, but it's worth it to have a, basically a Splinter Twin finish sitting in your deck. Exactly, yeah. So it's nice to have those two in the deck. Plus Siona also, like you said, Siona just comes out and digs. It, it, yeah. finds you any, it can find you any uh, ore in the whole deck, but there just has the nice upside of like, well, if it finds this one, you might just win. Right, and you know, there is a chance that the board gets wiped or something, but one of your creatures has indestructible, right? You get at least to untap with one thing. Even if it is just a little one one. Now we get to remove all of the stinky lands because we never ignore a mana base when we upgrade a deck. So we're going to cut Azorius Chancery, Simic Growth Chamber. We don't really need the bounce lands in here. Not huge fans and they are tapped. And Joe, what does Halimar Depths do? Uh, nothing. But it actually interacts with the top of your library. This is really good, right? No. This card is awful. Don't play I seriously suggest playing this card absolutely nowhere. I think it's not worth... A, you should not be playing tapped island for this effect. No good at all. It doesn't even scry. They have to all stay on top, even if you hate all three of them. Yeah, it's just we're not. We are so low on Halimar Depths. It definitely goes in the anti nitpicking nerds deck. Lumbering Falls, it's a hexproof land, but it's so expensive to animate, and it just ended up being a tap land. I cut it. There's also Thriving Grove, Thriving Heath, and Thriving Isle. None of which are bad cards, but we this mana base was pretty good, and these just ended up being some of the worst things in there. Mishra's Factory, what? They're that just, was random. Yeah, I mean, the Thriving Lands, like you mentioned, they're not bad cards. They just come in tapped, and we're mostly adding untapped lands or sort of fetchable sources for things like that we added. Yeah, but we also, you know, when we add tap lands, there's just this critical mass that I don't want to go over 12 tap lands. Yeah, and the last two we caught, just two forests and one island. We always we always get a couple basics. They tend to put a few too many of these. In this guys. case, it was more rearranging the basics because we added a higher concentration of white, so we had to lower the forest, and we ended up replacing them with planes. In addition to those planes, irrigated farmlands, scattered groves, perfect for fetching with our Kuros and Verge, which we also added. And then I thought this was great. Basically replaced the, the thriving lands with Temple of Enlightenment, Plenty, and Mystery, because the scry is going to help you get card advantage when you have Galia out. 
Yeah, that's pretty simple. I mean, you, you have the advantage of looking at the top of your deck already. You know when you want to scry. So if you have this and another tap land, you know when you want to play it as compared to other decks. That's pretty sweet. The scry lands do more work here than they usually do. Yes, and the last one we added, Kabira Takedown. Of course we added on DSTs. Ah, of course we added on one. This was we, like five cents. This card is so good. Yeah, with you always want to. we like playing one, two, three MDSCs depending on the deck game. This is the one for this deck. I, honestly, if they were all five cents, we would... It would be so boring how many we put in deck. We would play like eight in a three-color deck. Yes, easy. How about those stats, Joe Cherries? Uh, the stats for this we have budget, $50. But we only spent $46.46. Damn, we are good. That $3.54, that's all yours. That's our gift to you that, like last time, we hope you go to Patreon and spend uh, anyway. Yes. Original CMC of this deck was 2.77. The new CMC of the deck is 2.7. We removed a 7 from the end. We cut off a whole 7. What other YouTube channel is going to give you that kind of efficiency? A whole 7? A whole 7. 43 changes, and then we're only $46. Cards were like $1.05 on average for an ad. Can you tell what archetype is not an archetype that is played or loved? Yeah, uh, Maybe the auras and equipment. But a lot of the decent effects can just be found on like random commons and uncommons. Also fair. Like Invisible Stalker is like five cents. We didn't put any of the boggles in here. I don't think this is quite aggressive enough to be a boggles deck. You might need a higher budget for that. So there's no boggles other than Invisible Stalker. Yes. So that is our video. Special shout outs to every single one of our patrons. Love you all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. Thank you for supporting the channel for the I don't know. Time. You know, you were gonna try to figure out what number it was. I don't know what it was I was like gonna the four hundred and fiftieth time. I don't know. I don't know what I was gonna say. I, I don't know either. I literally said it, and then I realized there was nothing to say. Wow. Well, there is something to say for me. TCG player link in the description. Takes to tcgplayer.com. Navigate to where you want to buy cards from. Buy the cards from those stores. Check out, and then because you started with our link, TCG player gives us a kickback on the order. Totally unrelated to how much money you spend. You spend the same amount of money. It's amazing. Patreon.com. Honestly even better the best way to support the channel hands down hands down we already talked to what i did the patreon shout out hands down best way to support the channel agreed uh you can also head over to our discord there's a lot of edh games going on you can send us messages all that fun stuff in the discord and last but not least i can't not mention the discord just head over there and you can play commander games this guy he's getting he's fired all right i have a tidbit okay. i ingested glue today i woke up and I saw some like residue on my hands and I'm like, what is this? I thought it was like blood or something. I'm like, oh, it was my nose bleeding when I slept. So I like licked it off and like kind of sucked my finger dry and then like washed my hands. Uh, and then literally like an hour ago, I realized, oh shoot. We recently soundproofed a little bit of the room that we're in and we used spray on glue to do it. And some of it once I got on my hands and I just licked glue this morning. That's funny. Cause I cleaned uh, yesterday. Before I went to bed, I was like doing this and like, oh, my hands are really sticky. And yeah. I washed them. And it smells like glue downstairs, kind of. Not, I even noticed that. But we wanted to open the window. We both, yeah, we're, we're getting high apparently on glue by accident, though. We we both huff and eat glue here at Nipic Nerds. Yeah. And that's, that's how we get the best deck techs over to you guys. And the, I guess this is perfect. Uh, disclaimer guys should save us from that. Hey, I'm back. It's Disclaimer Guy. Nitpicking Nerds. Do not support doing drugs, period. Peace not, out, Tribe Scout. Not often that we go to that well. <laughs>